Hi everyone, it's Justine. Today I'll show you the art supplies that I use when I draw and I will demonstrate each tool for you and tell you why and how to use it. I'm not pushing you to buy stuff in any way, I'm just showing you what's possible and you guys can just have a look if you like. Um, we'll start with the sketching materials, then the coloring and then I'll talk about the paper. When I start sketching, I usually use an HB or a greasier one, it flows better on paper. It's also the one I use for you to see it better on camera, which is a 2B. When I'm doing gesture drawing or quick sketching, I also like to use graphite. So here you see pure graphite, that's why I'm using a tissue and wrapped it around it in order to not stain everything and myself while I'm drawing. And charcoal is also really nice, especially if you want an intense black. That's great for shadowing backgrounds and really black, black. To fix what you've just drawn, you can use a fixative spray from an art supply store or you can just use hairspray. It works just as well and it's cheaper. I use Elnet. L'Oreal is not paying me to say that, okay? <laughs> because it doesn't smell like alcohol, it smells like perfume. And I want the girl I've just drawn to smell good. So I use that. But any hairspray will do, really. Then I'm using six different ink pens. Three by Pigma and three by Faber-Castell. The Pigma pens are a bit thinner, the Faber-Castell ones are a bit thicker. Here I use small, medium and bold. Generally speaking, it's just good to have different thicknesses for when you want to draw little details or just save time and draw thicker lines. Now let's move on to color. If you have watched some of my drawing tutorials, you know that I usually mix color pencils and markers when I draw. In terms of markers, you need an assortment of colors that you like, several ones. I use chart pack AD because the colors are bright, so they're high coverage, they have many colors and they have a shaped end. That is quite practical to draw thin lines or take the full width and draw thick lines. Other brands include Copic and Prismacolor, for example. Important here when you choose the colors. For each color that you take in light, for example, life red, you need a darker color for the shadowing. Here I'm using ruby red. Then there are also grays. You have warm grays on the right and cold grays on the left. You don't need all of them from 1 to 10 each, but you should have a mix of a little bit of both. Then how do you do shadows on a black outfit? You need different blacks. So here you see from the left to the right, I use black, super black and extra black and I get my shadows. Then you need a couple of skin tones. Here I'm using four. Buff, pale flesh, flesh and mocha depending, but you can technically use any color for the skin on your fashion figure, it doesn't matter. Last but not least, the blender. A blender can be used as an eraser or to pull out details in a color that's already there. The more layers you do, the more the marker colors disappear. In terms of color pencils, you just need a few colors. A basic box is in fact enough. Here I use Prismacolor because they're highly pigmented, but there are many good brands of color pencils. You can choose the one you prefer. Important here is that you always need a black, a white, a gray and a skin tone for the shadows on the marker tones. Color pencils are good to bring out details on a surface that you have completely colored with marker already. Now let's come to the paper to use. The format is really up to you, but beware that your pre-drawn girl, your, your croquis, so to say, should always fit either in the height or in the length of the paper. So that's the format you need, depending on how tall your girl is. When choosing your sketchbook or just rehearsing your croquis, you don't need any specific paper. You just need a thickness that still allows you to see your croquis placed underneath. But when it comes to coloring, then you need proper marker paper. Here it says bleed-proof marker pad, any brand, but you need that because it doesn't bleed onto the line that you've drawn or through the paper onto the other side. Now that you've seen the drawing supplies, we're going to start drawing with color really soon in the series called Fashion Drawing for Beginners. So subscribe to this channel and you'll get all the upcoming tutorials. Also give this video a thumb up if you found it useful. Thank you very much. Now I leave you with two more videos to watch. This is my last drawing tutorial about drawing the fashion figure from the side view, illustrated and demonstrated. And this is my video from last week about trends coming back from the 90s, coming back soon, if not already. And it's fun to see how you guys commented and complete the list of the things I presented. So thank you very much for talking back and see you next week for our next video. Take care. Bye bye.